Hey guys, it is now time to finally make another tutorial. This is a tutorial on how to make a pen platformer, how I did it, and how to use my engine. So, if you haven't played it, this game plays up like this. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. I'm just. That's just me. I'm gonna leave it. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so. Now, let's zoom out and look at some of this code. So. How. The main part of that's hard to do on a, on a pen platformer is figuring out how you're going to do the detection. My detection is done like this. I have three lists. One is called, actually four lists because I have the endpoint one. I have one called ground and that stores each rectangle. Each rectangle takes um, 28 characters, if you see, that's one point, that's the second point, that's the third point, and that's the fourth point. Because they have a plus, minus, and then six things, so they can scroll up to 999,999x. And that stores it for each level. And then, same with the jump pads and the dangers. So, continuing on from there, we know... There are two of the coordinates of the rectangle. So that means we can plot the entire rectangle because we draw from one side to the other side and then it forms a rectangle with two points. So to test if something's inside that, we just have to test if it's less than the right side and greater than the left side. Less than the top and greater than the bottom. That is accomplished by my touching block right here. This tests for each rectangle in the list sees and sees if it's if you're touching it and it says the touching to one. If you're touching the jump pads it says it sets the touching pad to one and then finally the touching bad. So that's essentially how you do it. The hard parts I encountered with this were actually for for me it this wasn't too hard, but the hard part was probably encoding the level editor and making it so you can easily access it. Like how you can you don't have to manually in type in the inputs, you can have a nice level editor that does it for you. And this is done by this block right here. It's make number. And this takes a number input and then redoes the number so it's seven digits long, but it still has the same value. So if the number is seven, then it writes plus zero 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 seven. And then it outputs it. And then I add it to the list. And then it creates the rectangle. Now, I need, because 3.0 has a glitch, if you draw directly on the backdrop, it kind of makes like a little bit of a white thing around your pen. You have to make something that um, covers the back with pen, and this is easily accomplished just like this. You go to 0, 0, set the pen size to the max, set pen color to whatever you want, and then it does it. Another hard part was actually the play the blur effect if you see like behind that since you can't just create clones of your character you have to store those points in a list so every frame it stores the player position in a list and then deletes the last one and then pushes them all together so it does that and then for this i just coded a simple platforming engine right here this look code looks complex, but half it's just if statements if something happens. Like that entire thing from from here to here. 
actually to here is all just if statements. So the code's not actually that long. So if you want to go around using this engine that I made, all you have to do is set the level to the one you want and then the editor to one. Oh, I'm gonna choose an empty level. So if you see that spawns at a default position. But I can now draw blocks. You see. And if I hit two, then I can draw jump pads. If I hit three, I can draw dangers. And then to test my level, I just hit zero. Oops, I forgot I encoded that part in the platform engine. In my game area, you will have to remove that. Make it a higher. But if you see now, you can play the, the game. And then I'll say thanks for playing at that. So, finally, to draw a, rec a filled rectangle, which is what I've done in this, like here, if you see, let's see, I took it down to reduce lag, but if you go over to here, and this, this area right here, draw ground, and go to operators, and put a not statement right there. And then put another not statement, it'll fill them all. Now, I reduce this because it will it will cause lag. Uh, sorry, there's really no other way around this. It just It's just a lot of filling to do. And if you want to make this, I would suggest making your rectangles as as little rectangles as you can for each for because for each rectangle it has to do more stuff. So just do as little rectangles as possible that can get the job done. Now I think that I've covered all the blocks, but if I missed any, please tell me in the Actually wait. I did miss one. You have to make it so the thing so the program does not draw rectangles that are off screen. So here's how you do that. You all you it's pretty simple. Just when you're rendering them, you just check if the rect if like imagine if the screen was a character and test if that any of the rectangles have a pixel inside that character. And then if they you do, then you draw it. If not, you don't draw it. That will cut down lag. So finally, I think that's all. And you can just use my engine and go into the floors, sorry, ground. Just delete the levels you don't want. And then replace them with what you do want. And have fun creating.